still, like you use people. You can't use God. You can try. I try. It don't work. I got the results of trying too. He's too awesome to be named. First Chronicles 28, verse 9. And it says, And thou Solomon. Now you know Solomon was the wisest and richest man uh, that known in the Bible is about. And thou Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with thy perfect what? Heart. And with a willing mind. Because God ain't going to go against your will. He doesn't even go against the will of angels. But if an angel fall, that angel immediately goes straight to hell. That's why they follow you around, because they don't understand redemption. They didn't have nobody to redeem them like we have Jesus. They had nobody to die for them to shed their blood like Jesus. So when they were made to do a certain task, God said, I give you the will to choose to do it or not. So if they were made to stand and they decided to sit, they went to hell. If they were made to sit and decided to stand, they went to hell. Hmm. There's already a settlement down there because they saw women were pretty on the earth and left God and came down here and slept with women. They're in hell right now. They were the ones who fell with Satan. They were too far. Hello. That's why we have nine foot and ten foot people on the earth because they are Riffians and Nephilim. They were called giants. Amen. And they have a DNA of angels because angels slept with even women. That's why the flood came in Noah's day. Exactly. Hello. Y'all get a little history lesson. So, let's keep reading verse 9 again. Uh, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and servant with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understand all imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off for what? Ever. Ever. You can't keep serving Jesus and turn back. You can't claim, you know, God got a call in your life and want to turn and do something else. Hello. No. Watch what he says. Go to Luke chapter 9. Luke 9. This verse, when I first learned it and read it, boy, it changed my heart. See that, John? It changed my heart. Amen. The word comes immediately and takes them. The devil comes immediately and takes them. Yeah. Immediately. When you get a word, the devil immediately comes to take that which you saw. So they got their natural food, but they said, I'm going to eat God's spiritual food. That's not going to last forever. You ought to be more wanting your spiritual food than that natural food you feed you. But just that simple. God brought you here for spiritual food. And he said, why do you get my spiritual food? I'm going to take care of you naturally. And as you grow and humble yourself and die to self, watch me bless you beyond this place. You know, I saw somebody, uh, James, uh, most of y'all might know him as Moby Do, but I don't call him that. But here he was, that man came here and stayed too much, nobody believed what would change this life. Look at him today. Now, if God had given him the money that he got today, he'd probably be dead. But God knew that he would humble himself, change his whole heart, and watch his walk around bless. There's evidence that that man has changed. He came through here, left here, doing good, even got teeth. Better than me now. Amen? Amen. That's all God wants to do. He shows you evidence of what he's going to do when you change your heart. Amen. Luke 9, 62, what does it say? And Jesus said unto them, No man having put in his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You can't serve God and look back. You ain't fit. He says, you're worse than a person who never served me. You're worse than a person who never knew any of my word. Because you learned my word, and then you look back. You ain't fit for the kingdom. But guess what God will do? God will still use you to bless somebody else to come to him more faithful than you and see, take that person to heaven and see to hell. See, that's my fear. Amen. That I teach somebody the word, they get to heaven, and God looks at me and says, depart from me, I never knew you. Go to hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God, I told him you work. So what? I used you to bring them here. I used the devil for all my purposes. Amen. The devil don't run nothing. God uses the devil. The devil has to get permission to do anything he needs to do if you're a child of God. 
Amen. 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 All right. There are three phases in studying God's Word. Ooh. I was talking about this uh, with a couple of brothers that we were studying before. I'm going to give you all a little brief. I've said this before, and I keep saying, God, why do you keep making me teach? Because new people need to understand. You just can't read that Bible and think that's it. You know? You just can't. So, there are three phases in learning God's Word. To know the meaning and understanding of what God is saying to you, you must spread out the Word to get insight and understanding. Go to Nehemiah chapter 8. To know the meaning and understanding of God's Word, you must spread the Word out to get insight and understanding. I decided first I'm going to bring a black word and then it said, if it's in their hard work, they're going to get it. They're going to get it. They're going to get it. Just that simple. The ones who truly want it are just want to desire it. It's just that simple. But most of us just want to be saved. We don't want to serve. We just want to be saved and told we're going to heaven. You want to be fooled like a lot of Catholics. Hail Marys and, and you know, beads and, and, you know, blessing the crop. And you know, come on, all that phony water thrown all over you. Come on. A real perfect heart is the one that gets in heaven. Your little ceremonious acts don't get you there. I'm sorry, but I know I ain't, I ain't afraid to offend you if that's what you're doing. Because it's the truth. It's the truth. Nehemiah 8. Okay. Nehemiah 8 and 8. So they read in the book of the law, meaning the Bible, distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to do what? Understand and read. Now, if that's your Bible and you're writing or underlining, underline distinctly. Sense and cause the understanding of reading. Now, when they said they spread it out distinctly, that means observation of the word. When they gave the sense of the word, that means they gave the insight or the application of the word. Now, that don't mean walking in and acting it out yet, okay? Because the application of the word means, is it applied in you yet? And when they gave the understanding, because once it applied inside of you, then you can interpret. So you have observation, application, interpretation. So God says, in order to understand me, you must observe, you must apply, and you must interpret. Without those three, you don't understand me. And that stuff don't happen overnight. I observed the word five straight years, only in the New Testament, before I even started to understand any Greek, Hebrew, or, or, or background, or, or any of that stuff. Or history, poetry, I didn't know none of that. I just had to observe the word because I was a baby, being fed on milk. Amen. Go to 1 Timothy 4. So we saw that. Distinctly, insight and understanding with this observation, application, and interpretation. Now, that was the Old Testament thing. I'm sure you had to also do that in the New Testament. Are y'all following? Yeah. Amen. So, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy 4, Verse Timothy 4, starting at verse 13, matter of fact, 4 to 11. Okay. Yeah. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy you, but be thou an example of believers in what? Word. In conversation. That means your lifestyle. How you acting, bro. In charity. That means love. In spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attendance to the reading, to the exhortation, and to the doctrine. We're going to come back to that. Okay? Verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy prophecy may appear to all. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that Hear you. Go back up to verse 15 where it says meditate. That word meditate means muse. In other words, murmur the word, muse on the word. And then you take the mythology, and I said this to people before, a cow. A cow goes down, eats, right, swallows, and when he goes back down to eat, he regurgitates what he ate back up and mixes it what he's eating. Swallow it down, regurgitate, mix it. That's what God says do with his word. Read it. Swallow it. When you come and get some more word, bring up what you learn and miss it with that. 
Swap. Go read some more. Bring up what you learn and mix it with that. Are you following? Yes, sir. So you got to be like a cow. And the cow has seven bellies. So sooner or later, that milk can turn into meat. Amen. Now, go to verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to the reading. Underline reading. To the exhortation. Underline exhortation. And to the doctrine. Underline doctrine. Reading is observation of the word. So God says, take my word. Say, God, I'm going to study this and just read it without stopping. Just put it in there. Whether you understand the word or not, just read it straight through without stopping. Because the Bible said the Holy Spirit will bring back all things to your remembrance. But if it ain't in you, how can I bring it back? Amen. Whether you remember it or not, he'll bring it back. So you observe the word. Just read it through. Then he says exhortation, application of the word now. What am I doing now? Now I'm going back and look at what I just read. Now I got a highlight of the pen. And I'm highlighting everything God told me to highlight. Everything that applies to my circumstances. Because what my circumstances may not be yours. The same word in that scripture might not mean the same thing to you as it means to me. So I'm highlighting. Now I have observed the word. Now I'm applying the word. Now, what's that? Interpretation of the doctrine. But when I get a chance to interpret, that means I'm doing it for you. To help you understand what God is saying. So, you have observation, application, interpretation. But you got to want to spend time in that. Amen? I can go deeper in detail, but I just want to cover that basically because I do sit with some guys around here and we go deeper into the Word. Don't we, gentlemen? No, we If you're here. But those are the ones that are hungry. You know? But I sit here and when I do come and spend my time, because I'm not going to lie, you're wasting my time. Because that's the only thing you can't pay me back. You know, I'm not going to give up my time to people who don't who just want to steal it. You ain't stealing my time. So I come here and I see brothers just want to watch TV. You know, I see them just want to, you know, play sports and do whatever they want to do. But then there's those few who says, you know what, I'm hungry. And you know, sometimes God even wake me up early in the morning to say, go down, friendship. Like, I want to stay in the bed. I worked all week. Why well, I'm going down there? But I don't know my reason for showing up until I hit here. Then I'm allowed to more blessed than a little bit. Amen? But this is like the obedience. What am I going to do? Obey the bed or I'm going to obey the house? Amen. Amen. And every time I obey him, I get blessed. Amen. Amen. Go to Acts chapter 28. Let's look at some more expounding on the word. Acts chapter 28. I've been working hard the last few weeks, y'all. You know. Very hard. <laughs> but watch this. I have got promoted. I done got raised. All kinds of things happen. I got all kinds of jobs calling me. You know, even all the way from India. Yeah. She want me to run a company down here in Montgomery. But they in India. Yeah. And they got companies in Boston, New York, and here in Montgomery. And they want a little old more. I'm like, okay. But see, again, I tell people, even though those things happen, you've got to have enough discernment or judgment to know whether it's from God or not. Just because it sounds good and look good don't mean it's God. Amen. Uh, Acts 28, verse 23. And right now, they're not looking like they're part of God to me. <laughs> I hope they ain't going to watch this video. <laughs> him a day, there came many to him into his lodging to whom he expounded and testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning who? Jesus, both out of the law of Moses, meaning the Bible, and out of the prophets from morning till evening. We can't sit five minutes. What is he expounding on? The word. He's teaching them the word of God. And they are so hungry for it, they sit there morning until it begins to turn night in. Because they're hungry. They don't care about it. I tell you, the word of God is like music to me. It really is. Especially it's good words. Go to Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. Look at uh, verse 25 to 27. 24, 25 to 27. Then he said unto them, O fools, and so hard to believe all the prophets have spoken to you. When you ain't doing his word, you a fool. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things to enter into his glory? Let's keep reading. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded 
Look at you. He taught them unto them all the scriptures and the things concerning who? Himself. Amen. But look how long it was. You got to want it. You got to want it. Look at verse 32. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us? Tell me preaching can't set you on fire. It sure does. It sure does. But some of you get so offended at the word, it's a shame. Or you get offended at the teacher. You get offended at this ain't right, that ain't right. Who are you? These men and women have been doing this longer than you. And they're only doing what God told them to do, whether you agree with them or not. Maybe that's why you ain't moving or being blessed. Right? Because you're so daggone critical. Where your love and humility going to show up? You, ain't, you know what? You ain't nothing but legalistic. You know what we used to call it? My pastor always said, you're a pious Pharisee. You have a yes, You know, you're so, you're so spiritual, you're no earthly good. Dummy. Yes. Amen. Good. That's what you're doing. Amen. So what you go to the library? So what you read this book and that book? It ain't going fetch you. Because if it did feed you, the action of your lifestyle will show that that word is working. Amen. Amen. Not your head. Amen. Go to Matthew 13. Let's see the same thing. The, 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 the Pharisees and the scribes did the same thing. They got yeah. jealous of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> see, none of this stuff is new under the sun. When you make up your mind that you want to learn the word, people are going to hate you. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about people out there. They probably like you. I'm talking about the ones who call themselves Christians. Yes, the ones who say they believe in Jesus like you do. Just because you get blessed, they hate you. What kind of stuff is that? <laughs> See, I was listening to somebody, watch this. There was a man, and God blessed him with a business because he humbled himself. God gave him a job, blessed him with his business, right? Everything was going fine. Got a beautiful wife, had beautiful children, doing everything, serving God. That was the blessing of God. And he began to get God praise over his new job, his new welfare. You know, wealth and all that. He just praised God. There was another man. He lost everything. His children got killed. His wife got killed. Right? Lost everything. He came home. And you know what he began to do? Praise God. He just began to praise God for what he lost. So why did one man praise him for what he lost and another man praise him for what he gained? Think about that. Because God still gets the glory. Amen. 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 There must be a reason why one man lost and another one gained. Amen. Just like Job. Amen. Exactly. Because it's not about fear in that particular sense. It's about trust. Amen. Are you trusting God to redeem you? Are you trusting God to replenish you? Yes. Are you trusting yourself? Because could that man, like most of us probably have done when they lost everything, curse God? Ain't that what Job's wife said? Won't you just want to get out of the It sounds like you got a new wife after that. Too, didn't you? <laughs> okay. yeah. Ain't that the same thing Michael did when she saw David coming into town dancing? And David danced down, danced all his clothes off till he was dancing in his drawers. And she began to talk about it. Look at you dancing out there so all the girls can see you like that. You were just praising God. And what did God do to her? Struck her barren. She could never have kids. <laughs> Watch who you speak against. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Matthew 13, verse 51 and 52. God is the silent listener to every conversation. You may be thinking you're speaking by yourself, but God hears everything. He knows the thought of all men. Ain't that what that scripture said? Yes, sir. He knows your thought. Yes, sir. 13, verse 51 and 52 says, And Jesus said unto them, Have you understood all these things? And they said unto him, Yeah, Lord. Then he said unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of, of, of heaven is like unto a man that is a household, which bringeth forth out of the treasure things new and old. Things new and old. Amen. I don't think I have to go further with that. 2 Corinthians 4. 
Now, you see how God finds taking the word so important? It's either going to set a fire in you, it's going to do something to you. Either negative or positive, the choice is yours. I decided to take God's word <laughs> and let it bless me. I love God's correction. I don't care what none of you say. Every time I get corrected by God, I get blessed. Yeah. Cause don't leave me alone, Lord. Don't leave me to myself, cause I'm a mess. You leave me to myself, I will definitely get in trouble. Absolutely. Wrap me by my color. Come on, brother. Please. Yes, Lord. Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians four. Come on, we got a little bit more time. Chapter two. Man, a lot more coverage. I mean, Second Corinthians four, verse two. But have renounced the hidden things of the dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Let's go to verse 1. Therefore, see we have this ministry. There we go. See we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor hailing the word of God deceitfully. <laughs> but by the manifestation of truth, committing ourselves to every man's in the sight of God. What is that conscience? The Holy Ghost. The world called it a conscience too. But that's the Holy Ghost. If it's telling you you're wrong, then you need to get it right. Amen. 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 But I like that part. The word, hailing the word of God deceitfully. I've been accused of that so many times, I just laugh. <laughs> Brother, you know the word, but you don't walk it. <laughs> Man, you teach it wrong. Well, then show me the verse I'm teaching wrong. Come on, I'm willing to listen to hey. Come on, bring it. How long have you been saying? Three months. Why are you going to teach me something? How long have you been your Revelation Bible from Genesis to Revelation? No, but I know you teach it wrong. The history book by Joseph Smith. Why is that false prophet? You don't listen to Joseph Smith. Be a break. All right, don't get me started. Amen. Now, studying the word will give you confidence in what you say. I'm going to bring a message shortly, maybe next week, on are you bold enough for Jesus? The boldness of Jesus. Are you ready to be bold for God? But see, that's a hard one because you really have to be willing to serve Jesus. So if you're not really willing to serve Jesus and you just come for a meal, that message next week ain't going to be for you. So I might just have one kid. Amen. Because I'm only talking to those who are truly born again. Those who are humble. Those who don't backbite. Those who know how to walk in forgiveness and love. If that ain't you, just put some cotton in your ears next week. Okay? But I'm definitely bringing it because the Lord told me to. But studying the word will give you confidence in witnessing. Go to Acts 28. Some of y'all get ready to go forever. Some of y'all want to go because God is blessing you with jobs, blessing you with a, a movement of gifting because you serve well. And some of y'all just go on because you can't really serve. You are pretending to hold that on time. And God says it's time you get out of here and make room for those who want to serve. Amen. Amen. You get ready to go. Because my sister, God uses people to get rid of it. To bless you. Then you know what? God uses people to correct you. That's called ministry. Without people, there's no ministry. So he sends his people, designed as soldiers of the Lord, like me, and say, Go. Black Ryan, you got to go. And boy, don't let them see Jeffrey, you definitely got to go. No, I didn't. Acts 28. I said, study the word and we'll give you confidence in witness. So we're going to Acts 28 and we're going to look at verses 30 and 31. Acts 28, verses 30 and 31. And Paul 